I'm gonna share with you some at-home aquaponics, which is taking aquaculture and hydroponics and merging the two together. In my other videos, you might have seen a thousand gallon livestock tank, and that can be pretty intimidating. But what if we wanna do something at home or in elementary school or middle school class on a smaller scale using what we call appropriate technologies, or in other words, things you can find around your house. If you take a look behind me here, you'll see an aquaponic setup. It looks like a regular old fish tank, and off to the side you can see some plants that are growing. But what's taking place here is the fish water, which is full of nitrogen from fish, fish waste and decomposing materials down in the gravel. The fish water is being pumped up through a series of gutters where we have some hydroponically grown plants. They're hydroponic because we're growing them without using any soil. Let's take a second to look at some of the components of an aquaponic system. The first thing we have to have is a reservoir, a place to contain our water and our aquamarine life. Some people use aquaponics to raise algae or seaweed that's consumable. Sometimes that biomass that they create is used to make biofuel. Here I have goldfish, which come from the carp family. And scientists and science teachers will be able to tell you that their, their waste is full of nitrogen. Right? So inside this fish tank, we have a regular fish filter. We're feeding them regular flake food. And we've also added some nitrifiers, which help take the nitrogen and they add back their, their bacteria that break that down into a consumable form for the plants. And uh, it's basically a regular fish tank. What's different though is I've removed the charcoal or the carbon from the filter inside here because I don't want my good nitrogen my plants to get sucked up by the filter. So I just have a regular piece of cotton mesh in there to stop some of the large, large products from moving through. Down inside the tank, we do have a pump. I can reach in here and I have it hiding under a rock where my Placo is, my algae eater. And it's a regular $10 pump you might pick up at Home Depot or from any hydroponic store or from, or from a uh, pet store. Another component of the aquaponic system is the air stone hooked up to an air pump and that helps to oxygenate the water which you think you know plants produce oxygen but their roots also need oxygenated water. And finally we have some gravel at the bottom that's going to collect the decomposing material and that's just about it. As we move along the water that's being pumped out which it isn't constant it's on a timer goes on a couple times a day just for a few minutes, just enough to get the plant roots wet. We don't want to drown them. There, there are systems called NFT systems, which stands for Nutrient Film Technique. In that system, the pump would be on 24 hours a day, but it would be on such a regulated small trickle that the plants were barely getting wet. Again, not to drown them, just to keep the roots damp. The water pumps up on my timer, and I'll, I'll turn this on for you now. Let's speed things up four hours. It's quiet. But the water is traveling up through a tube and it makes its way up one gutter and then back down the other. And I've just perforated it with a hot needle in a few places so it's just spitting out a little bit of water. Of course, above, above the gutter, notice the gutter is on just a five or ten degree angle. Just enough so that gravity can feed the water back down into the, back into the fish tank. Above this, I have a grow light. This is a metal, metal halide light. There's metal halides and high pressure sodiums. We have a, just so happened we had a metal, metal halide light donated from hydroponics.com. And uh, this is a 250 watt light bulb. They can get up to 500 watts. They can, uh, this one probably produces a couple thousand lumens of light, measurement of light. And some lights can produce 40, 50,000 lumens. And you know what? They do suck up a lot of energy. And if we're going to be conscious of our carbon footprint, we need to find better ways to produce the spectrum of light. Luckily, if you are using leafy greens, okay. okay, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to come into a close up. You can say start that again. Start that again. Mr. Luckily. Luckily, we're using plants here that are leafy greens, plants that love nitrogen um, spinaches, lettuces, basils, parsleys, cucumber plants. These are things that not all of them necessarily are going to bud and have fruits. 
when you have very leafy greens like your lawn at home, you would know that the, that the fertilizers you want to put on them are full of nitrogen. When you buy fertilizer, you see three numbers on the front of the package or the container, and those stand for your amount of N, nitrogen, P, potassium, and K, phosphorus. Well, leafy greens, just like your front yard, you would know if you bought fertilizer, you don't need those all three numbers. You just need the N. So these plants are going to do very well with just the nitrogen that's inside the tank produced by the fish and the decomposing material, and they don't necessarily need a high-pressure light. You can get away with light coming in from a window, ambient light from a skylight or a greenhouse um, room off, the, off to the side of your house somewhere, uh, or you can even buy grow light bulbs that insert into regular ballasts and light fixtures. They don't put out that huge spectrum of light and they're not as powerful, but for leafy greens, uh, you will be successful. Groups I'd like to thank. The first is tastyharvesthydroponics.com. That's the company that's been donating to the classroom for years now, and without them, I uh, would have never broken into this area of technology education. The second is the NJTEA, the New Jersey Technology Education Association. It's the professional organization of which I'm a member of the board, and we represent over 490 technology education teachers in the state of New Jersey. You can check out our website too at njtea.org.